We are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. You just heard from Kevin Roberts, the president of the Heritage Foundation, which is the organization spearheading Project 2025, which is an effort to effectively turn America into a theocratic dictatorship. Now, Kevin Roberts is one of the individuals who wrote one of the most alarming chapters in Project 2025, which we'll get to in a moment. But the clip that you just saw was his reaction to the Supreme Court's ruling about presidential immunity. Obviously, a president being above the law is pretty ideal for an individual who literally drafted a plan to turn America into a dictatorship with Trump at the top. And now the Supreme Court just said that presidents have the power to get away with whatever they want. And that bodes really well for Project 2025. So we're going to talk more about Project 2025. But first, I do want to play his full remarks so that way you get the full context. In spite of all this nonsense from the left, we are going to win. We're in the process of taking this country back. No one in the audience should be despairing. No one should be discouraged. We ought to be really encouraged by what happened yesterday. And in spite of all of the injustice, which, of course, friends and audience of this show, of our friend Steve know, we are going to prevail. Number two, to, to the point of the clips and, and, of course, your preview of the fact that I am an early American historian and love the Constitution, that, that Supreme Court ruling yesterday on immunity is vital. And it's vital for a lot of reasons, but I would go to Federalist number 70. If people in the audience are looking for something to read over Independence Day weekend, in addition to rereading the Declaration of Independence, read Hamilton's number 70, because there, along with some other essays, in some other essays, he talks about the importance of a vigorous executive. You know, former congressman, the importance of Congress doing its job, but we also know the importance of the executive being able to do his job. And can you imagine, Dave Bratt, any president, put politics off to the side, any president having to second guess, triple guess every decision they're making in their official capacity, you couldn't have the republic that you just described. But number three, let me speak about the radical left. You and I have both been parts of faculties and faculty senates and understand that the left has taken over our institutions. The reason that they are apoplectic right now, the reason that so many anchors on MSNBC, for example, are losing their minds daily is because our side is winning. And so I come full circle in this response and just want to encourage you with some substance that we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. So that right there was an implicit threat of violence. He's saying, we're going to remake this country. This is the second American revolution, and it's going to remain bloodless only so long as the left chooses to comply and obey. If they choose to accept our subjugation of them, then things are going to remain perfectly peaceful. But if they reject us imposing our theocratic Christian nationalist values on all of them, well, then we're going to have a problem. Then this revolution that we're going to do is going to turn violent. That's what he's saying here with his full chest. Now, let's talk about what he expects Americans to shut the fuck up and accept. So this is the forward that he wrote for Project 2025, where he says there must be a nationwide ban on abortion. Additionally, all government protections for women, racial and ethnic minorities and LGBTQ plus people will be deleted out of every government institution. Now, also, he wants to outlaw pornography and subsequently outlaw LGBTQ plus people after designating them as pornography. I'm going to read this verbatim because this paragraph is very telling. Quote, pornography manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children, for instance, is not a political Gordian knot inextricably binding up disparate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual liberation, and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is as a addictive as any illicit drug and as psychologically destructive as any crime. Pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classed as registered sex offenders and telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered. In other words, the implication here is that porn and queerness 
are synonymous. They're one and the same. So to promote one is to promote the other. So if an educator, for example, were to promote LGBTQ plus identities by saying, I'm a safe person to come out to, or if a movie theater, for example, were to play a movie that promotes some pro-queer message, well, they would be shut down. And the teacher in that instance, I guess, would be forced to register as a sex offender. There's a lot. This is a 900 plus page document. You know, of course, they want to do a lot of other things. They explicitly say they want to outlaw gender affirming health care for all trans youth, which is medically necessary. So that would be catastrophic. They also want to reject international institutions like the U.N. and global treaties. So that way the U.S. would be unbound by the global elite. So they don't just want a dictator. They want Trump to kind of rule the world. And he also, Roberts, has some pretty choice words for environmental extremists and he argues quote the next conservative president should go beyond merely defending america's energy interests but go on offense asserting them around the world america's vast reserves of oil and natural gas are not an environmental problem they are the lifeblood of economic growth american dominance of the global energy market would be a good thing for the world and more importantly for we the people so he's explicitly rejecting calls to transition to renewable energy to save the planet and he's going in the opposite direction saying the next president should actually double down on more fossil fuels and get other countries even more hooked on fossil fuels so to be clear project 2025 wouldn't just end american democracy it is a collective suicide pact that would accelerate our own extinction it is genuinely horrifying but they're this close to getting it accomplished now, there's so many more policy pronouncements that they make, and if you want to read more, I'll link you to the full 900-page document where you can read all 30 chapters for yourself, but it's worth restating the fact that they want all of these policies to be implemented unilaterally, and the way that you do that is by first remaking the executive, and they have a very specific plan to outline how to do that. You consolidate power of the president, dismantle the administrative state entirely, that's their words, not mine, and fundamentally transform the way that government functions so that way a president doesn't have to have all of these checks. He could just do what he wants and accomplish most of the things that they want all by himself. And while they want to expand the power of the presidency, they simultaneously want to shrink the power of Congress so that way the president is less restrained. So there's no checks. He's above the law. He's a dictator, effectively. Like, this is quite literally a blueprint for dictatorships. This is how Erdogan in Turkey did it. This is how Orban in Hungary did it. This is how Putin in Russia did it. This is how you become a dictatorship. You take all the power and you concentrate it into one branch and you give that branch all the power and they get to do what they want. And it's, uh, that's it from there. But don't take it from me, because Common Dreams reported, quote, Kim Lane Sheppel, a professor of sociology and international affairs at Princeton University, has called Project 2025 a blueprint for autocracy, characterizing it as a direct copy of the plan that Viktor Orban used to take over the Hungarian government in 2010. If it is carried out, Project 2025 will concentrate huge power in the hands of the president, giving him the power to control the whole federal government at his whim, Sheppel added. Sheppel's assessment echoed that of the global project against hate and extremism, which warned in an analysis published late last year that the entire project is devoted to aggrandizing executive power by centralizing authority in the presidency and a key aspect of democratic backsliding is viewing opposition elements as attempting to destroy the real community, an essential aspect to quashing dissent. Project 2025 paints progressives and liberals as outside acceptable politics and not just ideological opponents, but inherently anti-American and replacing American values the analysis said targeting vulnerable communities is a core tenant of project 2025 project 2025 is very clearly on a path to christian nationalism as well as authoritarianism so the stage is set and we have never been closer to a literal dictatorship and all conservatives have coalesced around project 2025 it's not just the heritage foundation right-wing legal groups and lobbying groups like alec for example along with anti-lgbtq plus extremist groups and anti-abortion groups have all come together to endorse this plan project 2025 to end our democracy they put their names on it and they're proudly supporting this on the project 2025 website and a lot of the authors from project 2025 came from trump's administration and they're expected to go 
back to the White House with him if he wins. But aside from the Project 2025 architects, you have other people who aren't part of Project 2025 that are expected to return to the White House who are pretty clear about their dictatorial ambitions. For example, Mike Flynn, who uh, was the national security advisor to Donald Trump, he explicitly endorsed a Trump dictatorship. Now, it's been a couple of years, but here's what he said when he was asked about a Myanmar-style military coup happening here in the United States. I want to know why what happened in Myanmar can't happen here. No reason. I mean, it, it should happen. No reason. But that's right. Now, for those who don't know, the opposition in Myanmar cried fraud after losing the election in a landslide, and the military stepped in and jailed the winner, Miss Suu Kyi. So that Trump supporter is saying, why can't that happen here? And Mike Flynn is saying, you know, there's no reason why it can't. And that guy is going to be part of of a second Trump administration, along with a, a lot of other people who are part of uh, Project 2025. So not to sound melodramatic, but we're in the end game now. And all of this hyper-partisanship and instability could culminate in a dictatorship if Trump wins, literally. It's not a foregone conclusion. Even if Trump wins, you know, maybe he doesn't do everything that Project 2025 wants him to do. But even if it does 25% of it, that's still going to transform the country. Trump has already committed to the core tenet of Project 2025, which is consolidating power in the executive. So it's already pretty bad. But if he goes further and starts implementing their dystopian Christian nationalist policies unilaterally, then it's going to go downhill really quickly. So there's a lot of talk lately about bedwetters right now, which is a term that the Biden administration used to refer to people who are worried about his chances against Trump in November after that catastrophic debate performance last Thursday. Well, guess what? The Heritage Foundation, again, the leading organization behind Project 2025, they said that they're currently monitoring calls for Biden to step aside, and Fox News is reporting that they're going to do everything in their power to keep Biden on the ballot in key swing states in November, and if he steps down and is replaced, they're willing to challenge his removal from the ballot because they want to lock him in, they want to keep him on the ballot. Why? It's pretty obvious. They know that Trump has the best chance of winning against Biden in November. And if Biden withdraws and is replaced by someone with a better chance of beating Trump, they all know that their plan is in jeopardy. Because if Trump loses, it might be a while before another Trumpian-like figure comes along that's so willing to execute their dictatorial plan. This might be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a lot of them. So they're going to do everything they can to seize on this moment. And they smell blood in the water. And they want to make sure that Biden is the guy going against Trump in November. So do with that information what you will.